<laughs> you need to know. You need to know. Need to know. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the After Party episode 24. We are about to get into it. Ma'am, you said <laughs> something. You said for a later time that we could discuss. Your preference right now is New York, but that's not where you want to be. Just give us a brief little, I don't understand. What do you love about <laughs> New York now and what change do you want to make in life? Right. So New York is amazing. It's convenience everywhere. I got a 24 hour deli on the corner of my block. It's amazing. You come home from the club, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, go get you a sandwich. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know why you coming from the club? Because you out here. Out here in these streets. <laughs> Facts. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No idea. We're both moms. We be home. Ain't I nobody know. doing that. Exactly. I'll be like, oh, what time is it? Oh, nine? Oh my gosh. Past my bedtime. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Right. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. <laughs> we go to bed early. Okay. I need my beauty rest. I need it. I need it. No, but New York is convenient. It's a lot of, you know, quick, fast things, but it's a little bit too quick and fast. Like if I had, you know, tons of suburban money when I was younger, I would have moved out to the suburbs or maybe a small town right? and something that's a little bit more slower, a little bit more safer because <laughs> I got to use, I got to use air quotes. I got to use air quotes with that. Safer. Yeah, because any, anywhere, anything can happen. Got, got some crazy people, right? So Just think about the forest and the trees yeah. and where you can hide a body. In the, in, the, in, the, in the weeds. What? And they be like, what's that smell? Like, what? Yeah, nah. what? Wait, I watch wait, so wait, much crime shows, on. it's not Hold even on. funny. You just watched <laughs> something else. You said, think about the forest and the trees and the smell. Where's that? What's that? That smells like a body. Okay, so, <laughs> I moved to a small town. You segue this, baby. <laughs> to a small town. My pastor, Pastor Darius Daniels of Change Church, he always tells us about this small town that he is from. And I think it would be perfect for you because it has trees <laughs> and a forest. It, it has, <laughs> and, and you'll be able to have that smell if you want because it's <laughs> kill Michael, Mississippi. It kill <laughs> I should say kill Michael. Kill, uh, he wow, who, who killed him? <laughs> and why? <laughs> Kills Michael. So apparently that place just kills Michael. So I would suggest that if your name is Michael, you don't need to go there. I <laughs> <laughs> was very specific to Michael, but your name is Michelle. I might have to find you somewhere else to go. Right, right. Because actually I was named after my uncle Michael. So yeah, we not, that's a little bit too close. Yeah, I mean, but it's just that small bit. town feel that you want. That feel they have one sheriff and one doctor, and if you go to the doctor's office and he's not there, you can just pull up at on his at his house. And I believe <laughs> he said the sheriff with the one car also drives the school bus. Who better to show? All right, let's let's backtrack a little bit. Let's right. backtrack just a little right. bit. That's 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 a, a bit town. much. That's small town. You want okay. a forest? You I want to be able, I want to be able to have some conveniences, right? Like maybe there is a convenience store, but maybe it closes at 10 p.m. I think he did say it was one. What time it closed? Yeah, that thing closed at sundown. Listen. You already know. <laughs> Before the sun go down, everybody should right. Go. Right, they close. They close too early. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. So, so Columbia, Baltimore. Oh. That's the place. Columbia, Maryland. I keep saying Baltimore because it's so close, yes. and I visit Baltimore so much. So, Columbia, Maryland is the place where, like, I just I loved it there. I visited. It was me taking time for myself. The kids were with the dad. I was like, I'm not doing no work this weekend. I things can wait. I don't have any pressing deadlines. I'm taking a, a quick little drive to Maryland. And I found this hotel. My goal was to go to Baltimore because they got the oyster spot that I love in, Bo in Baltimore. Foodie. But, You're a foodie. 
Yes, I'm a foodie. I I love, but it has to be good. You know what I mean? Like I I don't eat junk. It gotta be good. It gotta be refined. So I'm like, okay, let me find a you know cheaper hotel. Try to like, but it was a Marriott. It's not a cheap motel, but more affordable. Right. Hotel. Um, but it was in Colombia, and so I got to spend time there. There was a bar in the, um, like a little bar restaurant in the hotel. It was amazing. Food was great. And I was like coming down in my pajamas at first, and I see these people at the door, you know, people coming off the street that wasn't even staying at the hotel dressed to the nines. I was like, oh, no, no. Let me go back upstairs and put on my good my good church clothes. And you know what I'm saying? So it you was can get beautiful. out there in the streets. So I could get out in them streets in in that bar. That was great. <laughs> um, I got to hike over there at a little park. I got to do some walking, some trails. It was just, it was just nice. It was peaceful. It felt, it felt good. Like it felt like okay, I could, I could live here. It felt kind of like home. how serious are you about that? I could live here. I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm so serious. It's just that I have to wait until the girls are like out of school and, you know, graduating and all that stuff. But yeah, yeah. I could, I could retire there. Yeah. I could retire there. So it's, you, 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 how, nah, how serious? Because people that serious, they start house hunting. So while I was there, I found a realtor. I found some open houses and I went to each open house that I could find within a certain mile radius. And I saw about four houses that weekend. Yes, I did. And it wasn't that I was ready to move right then and there. But it's just me. I know like manifesting things. You got to put it in motion. You got to be intentional. And you got to know like, okay, is this really real? Is this feeling really real? And even the houses, one of them was, I was like, if, if I had it right now, I'd be living right here. Cause it was, it was really, and it, it's not that I like things that are extravagant and all like, I'm very, very like mute when it comes to certain things, but it's just the feeling that it gave. And I like architecture and it had it, it had like archway doorways. It was so cute. It was an older house, but they had really kept it up well. Even the basement was like new carpet and everything, which could be something under that carpet. You never know. Sometimes people try to hide stuff. For the, they like the open house coming. I'm like, this is what we going to do. We going to invest in this carpet right here. They going to come the week before the open house. Like, <laughs> right? And then when they buy the house, we taking this carpet back. We're going to get our money back. Right, exactly. They refund. Mm -hmm. No, but it was, it was, it was a good feeling. So I don't, you know, I don't know specifically that it will be that, but I, I'm very close to getting, you know, that be in the spot that be in wow. the spot so we'll see you said that it's important for you and to to plan for the future to actually visualize things to actually test it out and yes. see yes how this would play out what other ways have you done that in your life and how have they have they mm -hmm. manifested oh yes oh yes so where i am now i actually manifested I take serious my mantras and I have my sayings. I have about 35 sayings that I say every morning. And I don't get to skip a morning if I wake up super late because my iPhone will speak to me. You highlight some text and you click on speak and it will say it. So I'm saying it, even if I can't say it out loud, I'm saying it in my head, depending on where I am. I got my earbud in, so I'm listening to it and I'm making sure that I'm on top of my mantra. On top of that, I have like some in my phone and printed out on my desk is my visual visualization so i have where i want to be and what i want in the future and that's there when i plan my week out i'm coming from a place of knowing what 10 years from now is going to look like and i'm can i'm working backwards and so i'm taking the steps day by day you know this is in my coaching program too so i'm taking the steps day by day to order to get to that 10 year goal what does today look like for, the, for me to get to that 10 year goal. And so I mostly not purposefully have manifested things. We're all manifesting anyway, right? We're all, no matter what we're thinking, no matter what we're doing, we're already manifesting. It may be something you don't like. It may be like something positive that- Positive or negative. Negative, right. Positive or negative, we're manifesting. And so I absolutely, like where I am in my business, I have seen it 
way, way back when. I've even made vision boards. Um, like I told you, my sister is a coach. So she's a relationship coach. But what took her there was her manifesting her husband. And before that, she used to do vision board workshops where we would sit and she would say, what kind of relationship you want to have? What kind of life you want to have? And she would dig deep and you, you come out there crying, but you also have a visual representation that you look at every day and you can manage, um, mind, use mindfulness and meditate on it every day and sort of see things start to come into your life. It's, it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit crazy, but it's so accurate and it works. It wow. really works. It's amazing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm you said something that totally took me right to God's word because God knew the end from the beginning. Ooh, girl, yes. yes. You said you knew the end. I know what's going on in 10 years from now. And so I'm working this thing. I, I planned it all. I just worked backwards from what my expected end is. Exactly. And I just worked my way back. You're, you're living such a, and teaching such a biblical lifestyle. Yes. Um, yes. In terms of living out promises that mm -hmm. are given to us in this Ooh. book that I read. And that I read often. Often. Yes. yes. So I got something else to share with you. Yes that um so i actually got this from someone who i admire very very much um and she has a podcast and she sort of i was going to be interviewed on her podcast and she said okay um when i knew you were coming i looked up some scriptures that talked about mindfulness and meditation and so I wrote down these scriptures. I've read them, you know, I don't, I'm not like the type of Bible person that knows scriptures by heart, but I'm in tune, I'm in touch and I do read every day. Mm -hmm. So she gave me these and I read them off to you and they're not, um, you know, the full meaning of them. The full, they're not word for word, but they're like a little snippet meaning of them. Yeah. So Psalms 4610, be still and know that I am God. That one right there, I was like, oh, girl, <laughs> there is four of them. And then we have Roman. Wait, 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 wait. Let's unpack, be still, and know yes. that. You yes. can't do that. How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? You can't That's do that. Good. That one is key, man. Be still and know. So first, you have to be. You need to be present. You need to be what? Mindful. Yes. Yes. I'm glad that you said mindfulness, that. you need to stop yes. and know. Because yes. that's that mindfulness. Yes. 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 Like, yo, you're you, but I need you right in this moment. You need to be still and know. Know what? I'm God. So I don't care how this looks, what they're saying how that feels, mm -hmm. I'm God. And what does my promise say? I will work all things for good. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy how much it, like it is one sentence. Mm -hmm. It's one sentence, right? But it's so full, it's so deep. And every time that I'm reading things and I'm going through the Bible, if, even if I already read it, you could read it again and you get something else. It's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. He's so good. Yes, 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 yes. All right. So what does that scripture mean to you? I said what it meant to me. What does it mean to you? You read it, but what did it mean to you? It's crazy you asked me that because I, was, I wasn't going to share this, but I'll share. <laughs> it's a little personal, but I think the moment calls for it. And I understand where he's going with this conversation. So let it be. Um. So there was a moment where I was reading this book and, you know, I'm constantly reading. It's an entrepreneur. We got to read. And in the book, it said that you could have a mantra. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. But it's like you can have a mantra that is the word of God. And the mantra that it suggested was be still and know that I am God. And it said it suggested to say it 50 times and meditate on it and all of that stuff. So I'm like, all right. I'll try that. I wrote it down 50 times a few days in a row. 
I'm busy. I, I'm not doing that no more. <laughs> like I'm doing. I'm not writing this out no more. Fifty times. My hand hurt. So, <laughs> so, so um, a few days after I had stopped, not even a few days, maybe two days after I had stopped, um, something crazy happened in my business. Where I'm not even going to tell you what it is, but it it looked like things were going south to the point where I was going to have to stop period no business and so after going through that and going and I had to get a lawyer it was cra- it was insane it was insane I wasn't going to jail or nothing like that it wasn't crazy like that but it was like what happened was so specific that it was only God saying like okay let's put you through this because something's coming from it and in the end like this was last year so in the end now that it this is closing up and everything i could see the revelation from Mm -hmm. it i could see that he was preparing me for something greater so now when the next level of my business i am fully ready because i done crossed all the t's dotted the i's i was like this ain't gonna ever happen again so when it, when you but when it happened when I was going through it it felt like the end of the world it felt like this is crazy I was like where is this coming from like who who does this happen to it was so specific like on Tuesday at 9 12 p.m. the girl with the glasses and the and the necklace on is going to cross the street but she going to go over on this side like it was so just very specific I was like this had to be God when it wrapped up i'm like that was god teaching me so that i could make sure i'm moving forward and operating in my highest value operating with integrity and i ain't making no silly mistakes because that was a very specific silly mistake and so to me it means everything it means to trust in him it means to go down into the nitty-gritty be out there in the streets okay (laughs) be in the streets and still come above what you've been through mm. and take from what you le- what you learn out that lesson. And I wish I could tell you all the details, but I can't. I just can't. You're but, good. but imagine the worst thing you have ever been through, the lowest of the low. There is a lesson to be learned. There is progress to be made. And mm. that's what that means to me. That's what that means. He got yeah. you. No matter what, he got you. Yeah. He got you. Yes. Lesson to be learned, progress to be made. All right, now, amen. amen. On to number two. Yes, number two is Romans 12, 2. And I didn't write down the whole thing, but I wrote down intention. And so she attributed that to mindfulness as well. Um, I don't even know what this says. Galatians. <laughs> Wait, intentional. Intentional. <laughs> To your mind. Oh, you want to break that uh, down? Yes, okay. we got to break that down. I'll break it down. Give me, my, give me that mindfulness, that intentionality of your mindfulness. How important is that? It's so important. It's so important. So I take this specifically. So let me first say what well, mindfulness and meditation. So mindfulness is the being aware and in the present moment. The meditation is like the exercise right so if you go to the gym you say i want to lift 350 pounds well you got to get up to 350 pounds if you've never done that before if you ain't that strong you got to work your way up to it so the mindfulness the mindfulness is the goal the 350 the meditation is the practice getting building up to it added on weight as you go Mm. and so with intention you have to be intentional about making space physically and mentally for meditating so i had said earlier one tip would be for a mom to create space in their home where it's just them it's dedicated to them and so that is intentionality in the physical but when you sit there and you meditate or you sit there and you decide i'm gonna sit here and leave my phone out of it be with myself in any way that that is for you you could just sip coffee and think about your day you could journal you could read that is intention and it it produces a result that you can't see immediately but you're going to get to that 350 pounds yeah you're going to get there yeah. you're going to get there and so you can meditate with intention some people meditate especially entrepreneurs at the beginning of their day about what does this day look like or here's my goal for the day how do i get there and they meditate on that but my favorite meditation which is kind of um not very exciting <laughs> is 
breathing. Yay, something we all do. <laughs> so we all have that. We all have that ability to kind of calm our bodies. And it's just by breathing in really deeply in your nose and exhaling out of your mouth as long as you can, a little bit longer than the inhale, you automatically trigger your parasympathetic nervous system and you calm yourself immediately. Like it, it is like magic. And the more you practice that and the more you're intentional about sitting with your breath, the better off you'll be in life. It, it even it even has um, health benefits. So, I mean, how could you not meditate? How could you not want to breathe deep? You know what I'm saying? So intention is one of those things that you have to purposefully plan time for yourself. You have to purposefully plan with intention what your day is going to look like and what your week is going to look like, what your 10 years is going to look like. So I love that intention. Yeah. I, I love intention because I would say you need to be intentional about who you want to be, how you want to show up, how you want to respond in different situations. Because a lot of people say, oh, I was triggered by this. I was triggered by that. I was triggered by this. So you explain away bad behavior i'm trying to say it in a nice way or negative behavior or that response that's not really becoming of the person that you want to be your best self so i would say intentionality also goes to your emotions and those emotions connecting to how you want to respond so be intentional if you look at look back on something and you like I didn't like how when they said this, I just went nuts. I didn't like mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. you need to then look at who's the person to me? Do I value what they say anyway to have a response? Hello. And then if I do value what they say, we need to either have a conversation or I need to stop valuing what they say. Right. But what's, but, but in that, let me stop you for, okay, I'm not going to do too much you coaching. Could, on that but in that, what is more plausible? Is it you stop valuing what they say or you having a conversation and seeing where they can alter and change their behavior? Okay, so I would say in one scenario, I'm going to stop valuing somebody that I don't value someone's opinion that I don't value. I don't care if you do stand there and call me out of my name. I don't care. I don't. I don't mess with you no way. We good. Right. Right. We out here in these streets. You can see me. Right. We out here in the streets. streets. Listen. There you go. <laughs> so okay. no. So oh. no. I'll behave. I'll behave. So yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> right. Know. And and okay. that comes up. That comes up a lot with my parents. Whereas they're putting too much onto the children or to another person. Where it's like, but you are in control of you and how you respond to things and how you see things. So maybe you want to take a step back and say, okay, where am I in this? Where am I? How am I responding? How am I coming through? Mm -hmm. How am I showing up? Yeah. So you okay. got it. Yeah. The other side of the coin is if they're close to me, we're going to have to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. I plan yeah. on having you could stay in my life and you're not my kid, my mom, you know, you're not mm -hmm. someone that I feel is an essential, is essential component. Mm -hmm. to my life I'm going to have if I feel like you're an essential component we're going to have to have a conversation I need you to understand yes but you also and that that I have boundaries yeah. so if you yes. do that there are consequences right right so you have the conversation but I also like to tell people to self-reflect anyway even if that yeah. person is really close to you yeah. what is it that they're saying because I want all my parents to kind of self-assess and be able to see where they are, where they're coming forward in the in a situation so that they understand that maybe I play a little bit of a part into what they're saying. Let me see if there's some truth to it. But we are definitely having a conversation and you are setting up boundaries. So you need all of the above. Come yes, to everyone needs all of the above. <laughs> coaching, dear Miss Kane. Come <laughs> with the coaching. <laughs> we are going to go to All scripture right. three. All Ooh. right. So scripture three is um I wrote down Gal, and I believe the way you say it is Galatians. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Galatians. Okay, thank you. Um Galatians, I, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it either, because you see. <laughs> 
it works out. We get there. Um, 522, self-control. Self-control. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a huge one. So self-control shows up for me because in the midst of me growing up and knowing how to be mindful, right? Because remember, it was a gift that was given to me. Knowing how to be mindful, but I'm a kid. I'm not practicing this all the time. I, I got friends. I'm a teenager now. I got to get out there. I, I got to be out in these streets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it would be times where because of the trauma that I've gone through here and there, I was a hothead. Like I would go off on somebody. I would never fight because I was like, I'm a lady and I don't, I don't fight. I don't get my face scratched. No. Nope. But I will tell you off in a minute. And it could be something. You could be joking with me. It could be somebody bumped it to me by accident. I, it took them. Like, I would just. Dice with that mouth. Yes. Yes. The power of the tongue. That's another I, scripture. Okay. I, Life and death and the power yeah. of the tongue and all that. Yes. So mindfulness has got me to the place where when I did, you know, partake in it and was able to, like, bring things full circle self-control was the first thing that i noticed i had and in giving it to children and teaching it to children they're able to regulate themselves and have self-control so you might have a kid that's super hyper hyper and you practicing mindfulness with them eventually that kid is going to be able to self-regulate and control themselves that's the beauty of self-control and mindfulness and meditating and all that yeah 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 i, I believe that self-control is uh, definitely a discipline that everyone yes. should uh, practice yes. and be yes. mindful of. Yes. I'm done. All right, yes. number four. All right, number four. James 1 19, slow to speak, slow to rap. Yeah. So you got to be slow to speak. Yeah. You so know, you got to be quick to do, right? What? Um, quick to listen. I love it. I love it. See, I told you I didn't write down the whole thing. I didn't re remember. I was just like, okay, yeah, I, I read them after she gave them to me. And I was like, okay, let me, let me uh, meditate on these. Yeah. So those four, I'm actually going to be passing on to my clients too. The ones that are believers, because I feel like it's so much that we do in our day to day and that we go, even if you going forward and you like, okay, yes, Michelle, I want to meditate. I'm with it. Let's do this. You got to see how God fits into it. You have to. To make it work, make it impactful, like really, really impactful. Mm -hmm. If you are a believer, it's yeah. going to be 20 times yes. beneficial to you, you know? Yeah. So, yes. 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 So those are them. My goodness. Yes. Because talking, if you're, if you're saying you're trying to have a conversation, and all you're doing is talking, that's not a conversation. Bingo. Bingo. So I wanted to get into something that you said earlier as well. You just you just reminded me of parents being able to be vulnerable and actively listen to their children. That kind of ties into all of these scriptures. Mm -hmm. Especially the last one. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine, right, your child is, um, you know, preteen age, whatever age, but, you know, let's just say preteen, 10, 11 years old, and they come to you and they're asking you for something. And you're like, get out of my face. I can't do this right now. Like, I'm cooking. You could be in the kitchen sweating, cooking, trying to do something else, kid, um, catering to a baby or have, trying to have a phone conversation, something. And they're pressing and pressing you and they're asking you for something. You're like... Come on, get out of my face, get out of my face. And then they look at you and they say something so slick and so sharp and so hurtful. Like you always busy, you ain't even doing nothing. Or you think you, you think, <laughs> I was gonna say, you think you all that. Lord, I'm tired. No, in a bag kids, of chips. In a bag of chips. Kids, kids don't know that. Yet. I'm hungry. Kids what kind of chips you like? I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, keep talking. Keep talking. Keep talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, but kids kids don't know that term. But, 
but they don't understand what they're saying, right? They're hurting the parents' feelings. And that's really what it is, is that they're hurting the parents' feelings. So as a parent, you got to be able to be open and understand that they're saying things that are hurtful to you because they're in a certain frame of mind. So you got to be open and vulnerable to say, okay, I'm not going to put them on punishment. I'm not going to clap back on them. I'm not going, you know, make them feel any worse than what they're feeling because they're having a moment. So I need to investigate and see what this is. So it, it takes a strong minded self, you know, aware parent to be able to do that. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be able to listen and hear in the things that they don't say. Right. So when they say something that's rude or it triggers you, it's, it's what they not saying. They not saying I'm hurt or I love you or I want more time with you or please come play with me. Like they're not, they don't know how to communicate that. So sometimes a lot of times it comes out as, okay, I'm going to do it, get mom's attention. And so if mom is in my face yelling at me, she's close to me. I feel her presence. Yes. Even though I pissed her off, I got all the feel that presence. I got all the focus, all the attention on me right now. I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna keep kicking her and running away. <laughs> That's Damn. crazy. Yeah. yeah. I've seen I've seen kids do that. I've seen it all. I, mean, I, I was out there in them streets and I seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. Don't do me like that. <laughs> Don't do me like that. <laughs> yeah. You said, you said something. You said, and it triggered in me. <coughs> Sorry, I'm not sure what just got caught in my throat. I can't be laughing with you all hard. Like <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So yes, keep my streets to myself. <laughs> okay, we're gonna keep our pearls straight. We're gonna be good. Here we go. Okay, so kids say things. <coughs> sorry, let me get. Take your time. Here. Take your time. Kids do Take say it. things, and I don't think that um mm -hmm. everyone takes into account. They don't ask, where did you hear that? Because mm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it may have been coming from you. They learned exactly. from listening to your conversation. Or exactly. remember that kids bully other kids. Yes. And it may be yes. something that's being said to them at school. And they know how hurtful that thing said to them. So that's why they feel, I'm going to make this statement. Mm hmm Yeah. So they get it from somewhere. It comes from somewhere. And a lot of the times it comes from the parent. And so just like what you say, they absorb and they'll say it back to you. You did the same thing to your parents, right? So what what is that? Why is that? So you have to go back in your past and see what happened and what you're still carrying. There's a test for that. You, know, you could go online and you could take this test and it kind of like points towards certain things and it, it gives you insight onto what may be going on with you. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, we have to do the work on ourselves in order to show up for them, in order to be vulnerable for them, in order to actively listen to what they're saying, what they're not saying. You, it, you gotta work on yourself because it's gonna be two burdens. It's gonna be a burden on you if you're not. If you're not fully prepared, you can't hang. It's can. going to be a burden for you, but then it's like, what are you teaching your kids when they get older? Exactly. They don't, they, and then you're looking at them like, don't treat my grandkids like that. And they're looking at you like, what are you talking about? Right. And, and they're going to look at you like, what are you talking about? I'm doing them better than you did me. Cause they think they doing better and they probably are doing a smidge better, but we are a product of our environment. So it, it's hard for us but it can be done. It's hard for us to not do what our parents did to us, to our own children. It's hard, but it can be done. It can, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. I feel like that's where the switch came um, between generations. It seems like one generation to say, everything my parents did on th with these things, I'm not doing those. So then we lose valuable things. Right and change change the way that we are parenting the next generation. And I think it keeps getting watered down. If we go back and we track back, there were, you know, manners taught, there were values taught, there was a village, 
literally village that helped you raise your children. You highlighted before uh, uh, in the main episode mm -hmm. that you were a latchkey kid. I've experienced that being a latchkey kid, but being the youngest, I wasn't the only one there. It, it, it's 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 amazing how things just evolved because you couldn't have been a latchkey kid way 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 back in the day it it you know they really literally had truant officers right. coming around checking on the kids and things like that it just seems like things have gotten a bit watered down in terms of the protection of kids especially with social media Ooh. and regular TV. Just the things that they're ex exposed to on regular TV. My mm -hmm. kids, I watch TV with them. I know parents that as I was <clears throat> watching TV with my children, letting them choose the channels, I watched my stuff after they went to bed. Then I watched what I wanted to watch. But while they were up, now nah, we're going to sit here and watch TV. That's how my mom did it. Mm -hmm. So literally, now we all gonna sit here. You know, you had that big TV in the living room, and everybody sat down and watched the same the show. Same thing. Ernest yeah. Shirley, Happy Days. Listen, we are gonna sit here and watch this, and mm -hmm. be all right with it. The Jackson Five show. Oh, they had a comedy Ooh. show. Oh my goodness. So okay, I'm sorry. Side <laughs> Janet, it's not the minute in my life. It's the night of my life. Listen, <laughs> Janet was getting it. Janet was getting it. And okay. Michael taught her how to do it. See? Sidetrack. Okay, back. Sorry. <laughs> I had a me moment. It happens at times. I snap back real quick. So, it's just that how things are getting watered down. So, I'm very elated that you are here to help yeah. parents, to help specifically moms know that they can still do the business of the business that they do while they still take right. care of the business of home and stuff right right you can have it all you can you can have it all yeah Who told you you could okay i told you you couldn't have it. <laughs> if you just watch listening to the audio of this you are missing some serious moves i'm giving up with this all right thing. Got so, the neck roll and everything. Hand on oh. the hip. You can't even see my hand is on my what? So, yes. But yes, I appreciate you taking the time to come to the after party. It's the after party. Okay, I'm sorry. So yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know people are like, wait, they really are out here in these streets. Hey. Yeah. Human. Yes. Humans in the world, not of the world. That's what we do. And mm -hmm. If you are a parent, if you know a parent, if you know a mom that is going through with her children, or you know some children that are going through with their mom. I'm sorry, listen. I'm trying to say it with a straight face and it works. Listen, listen. Okay. Some children that are going through with their parents. I'm just. Okay. I, 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 listen, because she has parent coaching. She does children coaching and she's teaching yes. you mindfulness. Mm -hmm. How to use your full mind to your full value. All right. I appreciate you being here in the after party with me. Yes. Everyone at dear underscore Miss Keynes is where you can follow and find her. All of her information will be in the description box. I appreciate you guys hanging around for the after party with me and Michelle. Have a great one. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>